To God be the glory all the days of our life. Praise him again. Now, this morning I want to explain something that is very important for the body of Christ. I have noted with a lot of concern for a limited period of time. And this is something that has started recently. That there has been a lot of arguments among the ministers of the gospel. And that has brought a lot of confusion in the body of Christ. When you watch all these men of God, including myself, because we are now exposed to the world. Everyone can access us anytime. And there's been a lot of argument about who knows more, who hears more, and who hears from God more accurately and correctly. But I want to say this, child of God. According to my understanding of the scriptures, there is no one preacher who is a marking scheme of the rest. If the believers take off their focus from Christ, at the beginning look, looking at us, a probability of failing and entering into confusion is higher. There is no man of God that is a standard of God. One time Jesus mentioned and said, no one is good except my father. Why do you call me good? It's only my father that is good. Praise God. The apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 9. He says, we know in a part. And we prophesy in part. That therefore means if this scripture is true, it means whatever we do or whatever you see is just part of what God has for us. Praise God. Currently, as I speak, there seems to be a confusion among believers. Not even believers alone, even among young ministers. But I want to say that even in a class of learning, even the student who scores A, he doesn't score A because he scored 100%. While I agree that all men of God hear from God, I can confirm that they don't hear the same thing. While I agree that all men of God, I'm not talking about the men that serve the devil. I'm talking about men that hear from God. Because for you to become a preacher, you must have had a calling from God. And when God calls you, you heard and you responded. Therefore, you hear from God, whether you heard once only and you have never heard again, or you are still in conversation with God, you still hear from God. But I can confirm that in as much as they all hear from God, they don't hear the same thing all the time. They don't hear the same thing all the time. That doesn't mean that God speaks different things to his men. God never speaks. God has never spoken two different things, but the same thing to Two different people who hear it differently. God has never spoken two different things. God has never spoken two different things. He speaks the same thing to two different people that hear what he has spoken differently. There is no confusion with God. I can tell you that for free. Any confusion we are witnessing, it's emanating from the interpretation of what the man of God had. 
Because we are the spokespersons of God. We speak on his behalf. But you can never speak what you haven't understood. You only speak how you heard it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise him again. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 18. The Bible says, therefore, consider carefully how you hear. Consider carefully how you listen. Not what you hear, but how you hear. Consider carefully how you hear. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has will be taken away from him. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. It's a call for us to consider how we hear. Not what we hear. What we hear is what God speaks. But how you hear it will determine the kind of action you will take. Praise God. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. Consider carefully how you hear. Please tell your neighbor how you hear is more important than what you hear. Because it is how you hear. That you will determine the action you will take. If God says go to the north. Talk to your neighbor. If God says go to the north. And you hear he said go to the south. You will find yourself in a different location. Not because of how he said it. Not because of what he said. But because of how you heard. Even in terms of visions, it's what you see. It's what you see. And it is how you see it that will determine the execution and the interpretation and the nature of the action that you will take. When God says that this is a year of change, that's what he said it was. But how you hear it will determine how you will interpret it. There are people sitting here who by the end of the 12 months will have nothing. Not because God did not say, but because of how you interpreted whatever he said. We have carried 12 stones. They may appear foolish to some people. But those of us who heard what God said, we know we are not just counting 12 stones. We are counting 12 projects. We are counting 12 periods. We are counting... <laughs> I don't need to tell you a lot. So how you hear? Say, I hear you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not everyone that stays in the palace that is rich. But it's no poor palace. It is not everybody that walks with a president that asks what it takes. Some of them are yawning the entire day. Yet yeah, they are with the king. It is not everyone in the kingdom. It is not everyone in the kingdom that appears kingdom. We normally say you are children of a king. But how you are able to decode and interpret what you hear determines a lot. There are beggars who are better than princes. They are enjoying life. And there are princes who are worse than beggars. Because of how they hear. A teacher teaches. That's how God is. He speaks to all of us. But when the time of examination comes. One of us can have a D. 
another can have E, another can have A, yet we were in the same class and we had the same thing. But we did not hear it the same way. It is, it's a similar thing to preachers and to ministers of the gospel. God speaks the same thing. He says, you go conduct a mega crusade. Another one will interpret mega to mean 50 people. So you'll be collecting money like 50,000 for crusade. Another will be collecting 5 million. Another will be collecting 10 million. Each one of them had that you need to have a crusade. Like God spoke to Kenya. He said, we are in a revival time. There are people who interpret the revival differently. It depends on how you hear. Tell your neighbor, be careful. Yeah. How, you how you hear. There are several factors that determine how we hear. There are several factors that determine how we hear. Not what you hear. You know, like when God speaks to me, he knows the kind of illustrations he will use. When he speaks to my wife, he will use medical illustrations. My wife will never give an example without speaking about hospital. She will always say, us in the hospital. Us in the hospital. And whenever God wants me to understand him, he must use an illustration of a vehicle. I can't hear anything that does not have a car. Even when he wants to tell me about you, he must show me a vehicle. If he shows me a moving vehicle, I will know your life is moving. If he shows me a vehicle that has been crashed in the front of it in an accident, I will know you have crashed. Because God will speak to you based on your passion, your interest, your hope, your liking. Praise God. There are people here when God wants to communicate to you about love. He will never show you an image of your wife. He will show you the image of your mother. Because your wife is not an express reflection of love. So if he uses it, you will definitely know the devil is speaking. Say hi you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. One of the factors that determines how we hear God is the age, our spiritual age. Our spiritual age. In Hebrews chapter 5, say spiritual age. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. Well, we can begin from verse 11. It says, we have much to say about this. But it is hard for you, to, for, for, for us to explain, because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk and not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Solid food is for the mature. Everyone will interpret based on maturity. As a pastor, it is easier for him. But equally, the ministers of the gospel, they see a lot of things. They see. I was telling my son, Pastor Jared, the other day, when God showed him who was going to be president, I called these ministers. I said, ah, ah. What God showed you is true. One of the things that is major is that God showed you that Kenya will have a president. Isn't it? Yeah, that, that is the bottom line. It's a common factor. Every preacher was able to see that Kenya will have a president. That was right. But which president? Well, that could be determined by how more careful you are in listening to God and not listening to the environment. Praise God. Another thing is your interest and likes. Your interest and likes. If you like good clothes, when God will show you... So if God shows you a fabric 
and you like clothes, you will see a good dress. Because God has shown you a fabric. Because you have seen a fabric. But if God shows me a fabric, I will interpret it to mean a factory. Of producing fabrics. I will see an idea. But you, you will see. An, you may look for it the entire day. I'll bring it. There. And, and we show it with fire. It's like God wants me to wear a white attire. Some ministers, when God shows them a man in a white apparel, they go, they look for a white suit. They say, God wants me to be in a white suit on Saturday or on Sunday. But if God shows me a white man in a white suit, I will come and teach about righteousness. Yes, it depends on how you look at it. Your ability to interpret. There are people who take it to mean what they see. Whenever God shows me a bus full of people, I don't mean to buy a new bus. I know he's saying the church should be full to capacity. And it must be moving because it must be a church that is able to move. That's why it shows an illustration of a bus. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, be careful how you hear. Yeah. So your, your interest and your likes will always show up in interpreting what God is communicating. Number three is your perception. It's your perception. Your perception. How you view. Like you see what happened in Jesus' family. When Samuel came to anoint the king in, in their family, their perception concerning the perceived king was too low that they could not even recognize that he is a member of the family. Because of their perception. So according to Jesse, in his own thinking, a king should have a few qualities of the, the rest sons, especially the firstborn, not like what God was interpreting, perception, how you perceive life, how you perceive somebody. If you see me, you know like, uh, like the advice God gives to everyone that if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, how you perceive a prophet determines what you receive from the prophet. How you perceive there are people even in this land, no matter how I pray for miracles, they will never receive any. Because their perception is, this man is of the devil. That's their perception. So this perception will determine how you hear whatever I say. 